What's going on guys, it's Gamer here, back again with another Dragon Ball Super episode review, and, and today's episode is Dragon Ball Super episode 94, and the title of this episode is the Emperor of Evil Returns, a rep, uh, Reception of Mysterious Assassins. Now the beginning of this episode basically is is basically just Goku back over a capsule corp, and he's, well, he's eating, stuff like that, and they go ahead and talk, talk about you know, Frieza basically agreeing to the fact that, yes, yeah, he's going to be, uh, he agreed to being resurrected back, basically, for 24 hours. Yes, Frieza's coming back for 24 hours, thanks to Fortune Teller Baba, of course. And then Goku being Goku, you know, he tried to hide it from everybody else, but immediately they called out, they called him out on his bullshit, saying that he's a terrible liar. So Goku admitted, admits to saying that he agreed to, uh, to a deal with Frieza, to basically resurrect them back you know basically forever you know and then Goku was basically just saying the fact that that wasn't really that big of a deal and Whis even also mentions the fact that it wasn't that big of, of a full resurrection of Frieza as is anyways because Goku and Vegeta you know the two of them can easily just deal with Frieza like just with the two of them, just, with just one of them against Frieza so it doesn't really matter if he's fully resurrected back to life so it, it's it's shown to not really be that that big of an issue and that's what we're basically just led to believe as this is happening over back in universe 7 a conversation between universe 9 and universe 4 the two god destructions from from both from both of those universes are talking about a plan of basically t uh, eliminating frieza so that way universe 7 doesn't have a full team and from them not having a full team and it's going to essentially weaken them because they're missing a, a tenth member for the whole team for uh, for the Universal Survival Tournament or the Tournament of Power. So they uh, so later on at the end of the episode, they actually U Universe Nine actually does send a whole bunch of assassins or whatever to go basically just eliminate Frieza so that way he doesn't you know participate in the tournament. And that's basically Universe uh, Universe Four's plan this whole time. He was planning on eliminating. Uh, Frieza uh, in Universe 7 clearly uh, so that way they wouldn't have a full team so that way they would be weakened and in Universe 7 we would basically just be eliminated just by off the spot because every single universe is blaming Goku for basically the whole eradication of all losing uh, universes so you would imagine that they're all pretty just upset at the fact of that so Universe 4 took, took it a step ahead and he decided to plan out a plot to basically just completely, you know, eliminate them from the whole tournament. We go back to Universe 7 over at Capsule Corp, and then, uh, Go- uh, not Goku, I'm sorry, Trunks and Goten, that's what I was trying to say. Trunks and Goten, uh, no one has mentioned the fact that the Tournament of Power is a thing. For all they know, all, all these people over at Capsule Corp are just gathering for whatever reason. Trunks notices the, the bulletin board that has uh, all these people that are on the team like Goku, Tien, uh, 18, Roshi, Vegeta, just all them, right? And then he's asking, uh, why is Frieza there? Isn't Frieza that stupid bad guy who died before, right? And then Vegeta, um, you know, trying to hide the fact uh, that the Tournament of Power is a thing in the universe might possibly be destroyed since everybody basically knows, he had to go ahead and tell Trunks that uh, Frieza had turned over a new leaf and that he is a very good guy now and he turned over a new leaf, like I said. And, you know, Vegeta, you know, being the prince of all Saiyans and not really, you know, liking Frieza, you know, Frieza basically just made him his bitch. So he, he gets pissed off, like, out of all guys to defend, why does it have to be Frieza? Just yeah, I, I thought that was kind of funny how it happened because out of all, literally out of all guys to defend Freeze of, of uh, just to, just for a cover up, it had to be Vegeta. And I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, Goku finally decides to mention the Trunks that uh, him and Goten were gonna go to uh, 17's uh, little island where he actually keeps poachers away from trying to t uh, take all the animals that are on the island. 
you know, to basically just auction them off or, or essentially kill them. That's what he actually mentions to the Trunks. And so he tells the Trunks to go uh, just uh, call up Goten so that way they can go ahead and go to Junanago or Android 17's uh, little island. And they go ahead and they make their way off there. And what was really funny was the fact that uh, Goku had to go back to Baba's place so that way he uh, he can give her a gift so that way she could then basically revive back Frieza for 24 hours. So he asks Krillin to actually go ahead and take Trunks and Goten to 17th Island because you know Goku's going to be busy you know taking Frieza back to Capsule Corp and stuff like that. So I'm excited for that to happen because it's going to be a little bit awkward for the entire cast. But you know what? It'll be interesting nevertheless. But the reason why I mentioned the fact that Krillin is going to be the guy to uh, basically take Go Go Goten and Trunks over there is because I guess I guess Krillin has never met Seventeen. That's almost what it seemed like they were implying. Uh, that it's been a very long time since uh, Seventeen and Eighteen had, have actually met each other, and it almost seems like Krillin has never met Seventeen before, which I find almost surprising, I guess. But it's not really that big of a deal. And then we actually uh, get a shot of Roshi over at Korn's tower, and his, he's doing his lightning flash surprise attack, if you guys remember. He did use that on Goku in the first martial arts tournament that Goku and Krillin actually ever participated in, and Roshi actually used this technique as, uh, as someone else. I can't remember who he uh, pretended to be as. Let me know in the comments uh, who... Uh, he disguised himself as because I can't remember off the top of my head for some reason. Um, he goes ahead and uses the lightning flash surprise attack on Yajirobe because, like I said, he was over at Korn's tower. And Korn actually asked him why did he decide to do final training over at, his, uh, over at Korn's tower. And Roshi pr pretty much brings up the fact that he remembers when he was young, younger trying to train with the greatest martial artist being Korn. And climbing up uh, Korn's tower, and so I guess he just wanted that to be a good memory to remember, I guess. And uh, Roshi actually brings up the fact that Korn must have already, you know, read his mind because Korn could do that. And Korn was like, "I just wanted you to say it," and just stuff like that. It was a nice moment between, uh, uh, between Master Roshi and Korn. You know, it was kind of, it was kind of nice. And then uh, Roshi looks like he's he's being prepared to fly off into the distance back to Capsule Corp, and then he says he can't fly, and I thought that was hilarious for some. And so we go back and we jump off back to Universe Nine, and in Universe Nine, like I was mentioning before, they're going ahead and they're planning on, or they plan up a plot to basically send off assassins to basically get rid of Frieza, so that way you know they can have one less member essentially for the tournament of power, so that way they can then get rid of Universe 7 as quickly as possible. We go back to Fortune Seller Baba's palace, and then Goku goes ahead and gives her the gift that she was asking for. And that was pretty much it for that scene. Baba goes ahead and goes back, uh, or goes to hell to, you know, get Frieza and stuff like that. And then we have a scene of Krillin 18 and 17, you know, kind of just talking to each other, catching up again after the years that they actually haven't seen each other and stuff like that, I guess. Just whatever. Uh, Marin goes ahead and interacts with her uncle, Seventeen. And what was really weird is that Seventeen actually asked Marin how old she was. And then she replied back asking how old he was. And Android Seventeen said that he was 17 years old. Now, what, now what I was led to believe, I'm not sure how, you know, fully you know, uh, confirmed this is, I was led to believe that uh, the androids, being 17 and 18, they aged a lot slower. They aged a lot slower and they can actually gain a boost in strength through training. And I'm not going to go ahead and just theorize the shit because I'm not, I'm not about that, not yet. I'm, I'm still, there's still a lot of stuff about Dragon Ball that I don't know yet, so if if you want to know just why this is the, the reason that Android 17 is only still 17 years old, you can go ahead and ask Geekdom uh, uh, what the reason behind that is. Maybe there's some interview with Toriyama basically explaining that. It's kind of weird. 
Um, you know, uh, Marion decides to stay on the island with Go with Goten and Trunks because yes, they do show up there uh, with Krillin and 18. Uh, 18, Krillin, and 17, they go ahead and they leave the island and... But uh, 17, 18, Krillin, they all return back to Capsule Corp. And we actually get a little interaction between uh, 17 and Piccolo because for those of you who don't remember, for whatever reason, uh, they did have a fight uh, once, you know, it was back in the Android Cell arc when Piccolo was trying to protect Goku so that way they could basically just destroy the androids and Cell and stuff like that. Uh, we jump back over to uh, Fortune Teller Baba's palace and then the Emperor of the Universe himself, Frieza, is then resurrected back for 24 hours and he actually punches Goku in the stomach almost uh, in the gut almost immediately saying that his, that his hand slipped. Goku does the same thing, but you know, because Goku's stronger, he puts them in the gut even harder. They go outside, and then they're met by a whole bunch of assassins, you know, to basically get rid of Frieza and stuff like that. And then Goku's like, I don't have time for this. Who sent you here? Uh, are you trying to prevent us from getting to the tournament? This stuff, whatever, right? Frieza being, you know, Frieza, the guy who we've, who we've always were left to believe as just a huge dickhead, straight up kills the guy that Goku was talking to off the spot. He just shoots a, a, a death beam towards like, his his, uh, his arm, his shoulder, that's what it looked like, so it doesn't even look like it really should have killed him, but because Frieza is strong, he should have killed him. <laughs> And so, he goes ahead and starts talking about the fact that my body had gotten soft while I was in hell. Why don't I just go ahead and just, uh, why don't I just go ahead and have a warm up? Goes straight into his golden form and then we're, uh, we're ended off with a cliffhanger of Frieza in his golden form getting ready to basically attack the assassins that were sent by Universe 9. And that's basically going to be the continuation of the next episode, which is episode 95. Now that's the end of the review for Dragon Ball Super episode 94. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Overall, um, the episode was really good. At some points, animation and art style was a little iffy as I was looking back at it for the second time and stuff like that. Overall, the script and the writing was, uh, was pretty nice, I guess. Uh, like I said, there was a little like key points where uh, Frieza, uh, Frieza's face looked a little, a little awkward at times, where it really shouldn't have looked like the way it did. But overall, uh, the episode was really good. The writing was really good. Chore choreography for what there was for just what they were doing was was a little interesting. S stuff like that. The whole conversation between uh, the universes of Universe Four and Universe Nine. Uh, I thought was pretty interesting because, you know, Universe 4 isn't the only one trying to get rid of them, and it's showing, you know. So Universe 7 is basically going to have a lot of trouble with, you know, the Tournament of Power when it officially starts, which hopefully should be in the next coming episodes. Now, I might make another video about future episode spoilers because the last video that I did talking about future episode spoilers was when I was talking about Frieza coming back in episode 93 and that video did really well you know for the size of my channel it did really well I got it got 21 views so I might I might end up doing it again uh, let me know in the comments if you do want to see that but anyways I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the video here if you guys enjoyed the video be sure to drop a like and if you're brand new to the channel you want to see more content just like this be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video I hope you guys are having a fantastic morning day or evening I hope you guys are just, you know, having a fantastic, wonderful fucking day. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.